What's up everybody? It's Mark again and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. It is the beginning of June and that means that it is time to really start scouting again. I just got done doing my first scouting mission yesterday. I'll be putting a video together of that here pretty soon to show you what I'm looking for and where I put some cameras out. But before we do that, we still have about a week to get your quota permit applications in. And for a lot of people, this can be a really confusing time of the year. And so this video is going to be all about how those quota permit applications work, how you can do them, um, but also how the drawing itself is actually done. And I just got off the phone with um, a guy from FWC that actually is involved in creating the algorithm, the equation that does that drawing. So I'm gonna to explain to you how it's all put together so that you can be strategic in how you select your choices. Let's get into it. Dude, that is a big deer. And he didn't go 30 yards. Oh my God. <laughs> that was the first buck I've ever shot. Woo! What a rush! Money! That deer is dead. Tagged out, baby! <laughs> you shot one? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I saw him go what? down. Before I dive right into it, just want to make a quick announcement. There are two events coming up that we would really like to have you guys come and join us at. The first one is going to be on June 17th, um, and yes, that is Father's Day weekend. And if you are a father, you get to tell your family exactly what you want to do that weekend. So you should come out to our second annual Saddle Hunter 3D Archery Tournament and workshop. So if you've been thinking about getting into saddle hunting, this is gonna be a great event for you to try out a whole bunch of different gear um, so that you can you know, figure out what you wanna buy for yourself. But also if you've already been into saddle hunting and you have a saddle, or even if you don't have a saddle, cause we have loaners, you can come out and shoot the tournament. Um, and this is gonna be a 3D archery tournament specifically designed to be shot from a saddle. So you'll climb up into a tree, You'll clip in, you'll shoot at multiple targets, and we're gonna try and put you in some really weird positions that you can only achieve from a saddle. The whole point of this is to prepare you for the season, get you trying some of those weird offside shots. Um, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Last year, we had a bunch of people show up. This year, we're hoping to get even more. So if you wanna come to that, make sure you pre-register because you'll get a free uh, limited edition shirt that's only available to the people that pre-register. You can find all the details for it on our Facebook page, and there's a link down in the description. The second event that might be of interest to you is one that we put together every year with Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. If you don't know about Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, make sure you go check them out at backcountryhunters.org slash Florida. It is a chapter of a national nonprofit organization that focuses on making sure that we maintain and gain more access to public lands. So this is really important to us, should be important to you. Go check them out, think about becoming a member. Anyway, the event is a scouting workshop. And what we do is we meet up at Riverbend Park in Jupiter. We put a bunch of people, like we break everybody up into groups, put them with really experienced hunters in Florida. We split up and go into the preserve. There we look for deer, hog, turkey sign, any kind of wild game sign that we can find. And the experienced hunters will explain what they see in that sign, how fresh it is. Pretty fresh, and one of the reasons you can tell it's old, I mean, there's a big spider web in there. You know, what they're reading from that sign, how they would go about potentially hunting or setting up cameras or doing whatever they need to do to get meat in the freezer. So if you have lots of questions, you wanna ask some of the experienced hunters, this is gonna be a great event for that. So hopefully we'll see you at that event. It's gonna be on July 15th, and all the details for it will also be in our Facebook page. Now let's get into quota permits. Now before I show you how to apply, I want you to understand something that is relatively important to the hunting community. Um, if you're gonna apply for quota permits, understand there's a lot of people out there that have put a lot of work into learning those areas. So if you get a quota permit that you've never 
been to that area, don't go online and ask people for information uh, because you're probably just gonna upset them because they've put a lot of work into it and they really wanted to get that permit themselves. And so they feel like you're kind of wasting their opportunities by sort of stealing that permit away from them and you don't even know anything about it. They learned the simple way, boots on the ground, getting out there, figuring it out. And that's exactly what you are expected to do. So if you do get a permit that you've never been to before, that's awesome. Uh, but make sure you get out there, put in the work, and do your scouting. Now, if you do want to get uh, some information from other people, consider maybe offering them your guest spot. Um, that at least gives them something in return for the effort that they've already put into it. Um, and if you, you know, prefer having somebody that has a little bit of experience out there with you, that's definitely a great way to get that information. Also a great way to make friends. I've actually made quite a lot of friends by just inviting people on hunts and uh, I still hunt with those people today. So try doing that. It's a much better approach than just asking online for information. So if you've ever looked into quota permits in Florida or you've talked to some other hunters, you've probably heard people talking about preference points. So before I show you the mechanisms of applications, I want you to understand how preference points work. It's relatively straightforward. If you apply for a permit in phase one um, and you don't get a permit, then you get a preference point for the following year. And that's gonna increase your chances of drawing a permit uh, year after year and this way uh, the system sort of ensures that uh, everybody gets a fair chance at drawing a permit it's not a complete random draw that way people that have already drawn permits have less chance than those who have not drawn permits yet with that said um, if you apply for quota permit areas that are harder to get it's going to take you longer to get them but eventually you will get them because there are those uh, those preference points but for some areas it may take you up to 10 or even 15 years to get enough points to get them so keep that in mind um, and try and do a little bit of homework about the area you're interested in to make sure that you understand about how long it will take you to get a permit so there's a couple of ways to access the system uh, the FWC system uh, you can do it on your computer I personally I like to do it in the app you can just download the app it's called my FWC and if this is your first time applying, you're gonna to need to make an account first. And the only thing that you actually need to have in order to apply is gonna be your wildlife management area permit. Stamp? Permit. It's like 26 bucks or something like that. Um, you don't actually have to have a license yet to apply for those quota permits, but you do have to have that area, that management area permit. So make sure you get that first, um, and then you're ready to apply for quotas. So I'm gonna walk you through the process of doing it on the phone, um, on the app. So when you open the app, you're gonna see four tiles. You're gonna click on the top right one. It's gonna ask you to log in. Once you're logged in, um, if you don't have that management area permit yet, make sure you buy that. You're gonna click on the top left tile to do that. But assuming you already have it, you're gonna click on the bottom left tile, which says limited quota hunts and quota permits or something something along those lines click on that one um, and then it's going to show you a list of all of the permit applications that are currently open so this list will change over time and as you can see in my list most of them are gray because I've already applied for them the only one that I haven't applied for is the tracked vehicle and the reason is because in order to apply for the tracked vehicle permit you have to have a registered tracked vehicle and there's only two WMAs in the whole state where you can even use a tracked vehicle um, I don't have a tracked vehicle so you know I've left it blank but I can use it to show you guys how this works so I'm gonna click on the tracked vehicle and then go down to the bottom and click next once you have clicked on the type of hunt it's then gonna ask you if you want to apply as an individual or as a group um, not all of the quota permit applications allow you to apply as a group, uh, but in this particular case, most of the deer ones, or I think all of the deer ones do allow it. So in this case, I'm gonna apply as an individual, but if you do wanna apply with a group, basically what that does is it ensures that everybody in your group either gets the permit or nobody gets it. If you're gonna do that, just keep in mind that when you, when you apply as a group, it's going to use the preference points 
of the person who has the least for everybody in the group. So if you have a bunch of people that have five pre preference points and another person has two, then everybody's gonna apply as if they have two. So generally speaking, it's a good idea to make a group with people who have a similar or the same number of preference points. But if you wanted to apply for a group, e either you would create a new group, if you're the first person in your group to apply, you would click create a group and basically your checkout's gonna be exactly the same as doing it as an individual, except at the end, it's gonna give you a group number. You can then share that group number with your friends. And then when they apply, they can click this bottom option, which is um, join a group. And when you do that, it's gonna ask you for that number. You put that in and then everything's already filled out because the original uh, group creator has already put in those choices. Um, so that's how you do it as a group. I'm going to walk you through the process as an individual. Now, it's going to ask you what choices you want to put into the application. So it's important that you order these uh, from the ones that you want the most to the ones that you want the least. Now, typically with deer hunting permits, you'll get five choices. In this case, you're only seeing two because there's only two places in the whole state where you can use a tracked vehicle. But normally you would see five. So you select the choices that you want, and then you're going to hit next again. Um, and in this case, it's going to ask me for that registration number, which I don't have. So I can't show you the next screen. But typically, if you were doing this for a different permit that doesn't require that registration, at this stage, it would show you a checkout screen. There is no cost of applying for these, these quotas. So uh, it's gonna basically have a checkout screen with a total of zero dollars and zero cents. So um, you're gonna click that you agree down at the bottom. There's two little things you have to click and then click checkout and that's it. You are in the quota permit applications. And you're gonna have to do this for each one of those uh, different types. So you're gonna have to cycle back to the beginning, click on that bottom left tile again select the next type of hunt in the list and then go through the process again and kind of keep an eye on this area because you will uh if you want to apply for ducks or for uh turkey those will appear in that list later on once the permit applications are open and if you want to see when the permit application periods are you can find those on the MyFWC website, and I'll try to remember to put a link down in the description where you can find all of that. So this next part of the video is for those of you who have uh, already known how to apply for permits, but maybe wanted a little bit of clarification about how exactly the drawing works. And frankly, I was one of them until yesterday when I called FWC and I spoke to um, Wes Sykes, and I spoke to one of the people that um, is involved in creating this system. And he gave me a lot of really helpful information, which I'm gonna share with you. So uh, just for the purpose of this example, um, here's Florida. We're gonna pretend that uh, there's like 49 people in Florida that are applying for permits. This is obviously an imaginary number. In reality, there's like over 100,000 that are applying for permits. But for this example, there are 49. Here they are. And uh, so the first thing that you do is you have all the hunters on a list. Every single one of them in the entire state that applied for each type of hunt. And when I say type of hunt, I mean archery, muzzleloader, general gun, duck season A, B, or C, or turkey season, so on and so forth. So basically every different uh, every different type of hunt in that list that I talked about before, that you can select to apply, um, those are all gonna be drawn separately. So let's just take archery uh, for this example. Everybody who applied for an archery permit is gonna go into a list. And then every single person is gonna have a random number um, assigned to their account. Then that list is gonna be reorganized by those random numbers so that the person who had the lowest random number is gonna be at the top. And then from there, the process is pretty simple. You start, they start way at the top of the list. The first person on the list gets first pick. So it then, in this case, hunter number two uh, had random number seven, which was the lowest number. 
And this particular hunter, his name is Billy Bob. So let's take a look at Billy Bob's choices. So his first choice was Palmetto Creek, and it, the opening weekend, and his second choice was Palmetto Creek, the second weekend. Then he had Riverbend Park and Key Deer Slough, uh, first and second weekend. Now, because he's the first pick, it means he's going to get his first choice, um, which in this case is Palmetto Creek number one. Now, it gets a little more complicated the further down the list you get because um, not all of these hunts are going to be available. So let's scoot down the list a little bit to uh, the 11th person in the list, and this is Hunter 27. He had the random number 148. Um, this hunter is called Joe Jameson, and Joe picked Palmetto Creek opening weekend as his first pick as well. But all 10 of the people before him also picked Palmetto Creek opening weekend as, his, as their number one pick. Here's the problem. There's only 10 permits available for opening weekend in Palmetto Creek. So at this point, all of those hunts are full, which means as you go through um, his choices, the first one is no longer available. So then it goes on to the second choice, which is the second week of Palmetto Creek, which in this case is still available. So that's the permit that he gets. Now let's scoot all the way down to the bottom of the list. This poor guy, Lou Lopez, he is the, he got the lowest random or the highest random number of all. So he is at the very bottom of that list. Now he had a different strategy. He was determined to get an opening weekend. So all of his choices are the first weekends or the first hunts of each area. But it was so important to him to get an opening weekend that he decided that in the very last pick, he was going to pick a place that nobody really wants to hunt. And so he picked Big Cypress. And so when the algorithm went through his choices, Palmetto Creek opening weekend, already gone. Riverbend Park opening weekend, already gone. Key Deer Slough, already gone. Everglades National Park, already gone. And finally, Big Cypress, there was still a hunt available. And so he still was able to get a permit, even though he was the very last person on the list. So hopefully this... It gives you a little bit of insight to how this drawing works. Now you might be wondering, well, how do uh, preference points play into this? And it's really, really simple. Uh, it's the same exact process. The only difference is that the people who have the most preference points get drawn first. So the most preference points that you can get is 15, which means that you were unsuccessful or returned a permit for 15 years. Um, so the, all the people that have 15 permits or 15 preference points will get uh, this random drawing that I just described done first. And then once all of them, once you've been through all of them, then it goes to everybody who has 14 points and then everybody who has 13 points and then 12, 11, 10, so on and so forth. Um, and so that's how uh, people who have higher amounts of preference points are given preference and the chances of getting um, whatever they chose is the highest. Now, you might be wondering, like, what if I draw a permit and I can't go and then I lost all my points? Don't fret. You can return your permit as long as you do it. As long as you do it at least two weeks before your hunt, you will get your preference points back. So this is how you can make sure that you build up all your preference points just in case you, you know, let's say you draw a hunt you thought was going to be awesome. You went out there and scouted and you couldn't find really the sign that you were looking for and you didn't want to waste your preference points on a hunt that you didn't feel confident about. So you return it, you get your points back and you can try a different area or the same area the following year. That's how our preference points drawing and applications work. Hopefully you guys found that helpful. And uh, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you do it now. Maybe go check us out on Instagram as well. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace out.